Good morning, crew. So today we're going to be making um, our breakfast quesadillas as was printed in the morning meals um, book. It is morning time. I am still in my pajamas. Um, I'm going to try and make something without the help of my dog. However, I can see he's already here in the kitchen at my feet waiting to get a taste. So if you would please go ahead and open up into a new window and you can drag it to the side so that way you can see me on one side and then the recipe on the other side and I have put the recipe on my website underneath um, read alouds and so the first thing it says is it says it makes two servings we've talked about this word servings meaning that it's going to feed two people so if you have a sibling that you would like to help or that you would like to make breakfast for um, if you have um, a parent that maybe you'd like to make breakfast for, this would be a great opportunity. Or you can save some for later and then you've already made lunch. So we need to get out some of the materials that we need. So it says two flour tortillas. I have mine still in a bag. Um, one onion. I used an onion last night, so I actually only have half an onion, but that'll work because I'm only making one um tortilla or one quesadilla I mean one jalapeno pepper optional I'm not a jalapeno fan personally I just I'm not a fan of how they taste and they are can be a little spicy so that word optional really means if you want to and if you have that ingredient you can add it half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese have mine right here um, two slices of ham, two thin slices of ham. We had ham for dinner a couple of nights ago, and so mine's still in a bag that was in the fridge, um, but I'll be using that when we get to that portion. And then one cup, 240 grams of sour cream, one cup, 240 grams of salsa. So you'll notice that a lot of recipes put things in two different measurements, um, and that's just to help people who have or who use different measurements to be able to make the same recipe. So I know that you've seen on a thermometer there's sometimes a C or an F Fahrenheit or Celsius. Both of those are ways of measuring temperature. They just do it in a slightly different way but both are accurate. So same with cups and grams. It's just another way to measure something. So let's look at the what to do says place one tortilla on a microwave safe plate. So I have used, or I'm going to use, a paper plate just because it makes it a little easier and then the cleanup's not so hard. So I'm gonna get out my tortillas. And I'm gonna just put my tortilla in the middle of my plate. All right. The next step says cut onion into small pieces. This might be the step that you get some help from a parent. But I have a cutting board here and I'm getting out my onion. And what I have found for the easiest way to cut something is to hold my knife in one hand and to not put a finger on top because sometimes when you're pushing you push too hard and that kind of part of the knife starts to hurt. So I really just hold the handle portion. And then with my other hand, I try to just keep the food steady. So what I'm going to do first, and I'm not, I'm not a chef. I just have cooked some things. Um, so I highly recommend at this point in the video, you go watch someone tell you how to cook because I don't know the best methods for cutting with a knife. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold my onion down with one hand and I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut sideways into it this way. So I'm making a horizontal cut. That way my onion pieces aren't so gigantic. And I didn't go all the way across just because it keeps it together a little bit easier, but I was really pushing hard with my other hand to make sure that um, my onion stayed put. I'm gonna do another cut, but slightly higher. If you have one of those fancy um, chopper things that you just go chop, 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 and your vegetables get cut, I highly recommend this is what you use. Um, 
I'm peeling off some of this outer layer. So if you've ever bought an onion at the grocery store, you've noticed it kind of has this paper layer on it. That's not the yummy part of an onion. It's kind of gross, actually. I'm sure it is edible. I don't think you're gonna get hurt by eating it. However, if you wanna peel that completely off so that we're just left with almost like a, like a squishy onion, it's not super squishy, obviously, but it definitely has a squishier texture than this paper feel. All right, so now that I've cut my onion horizontally, I'm gonna cut it vertically. And when I'm doing this, this onion's gonna to want to go everywhere, so I'm gonna put my palm here, and then I'm gonna put my fingers on the other side of my knife. I'm not in the way of my knife, but that's gonna hold my pieces together. notice even though my onion is cut it's still kind of whole like an onion and what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna squish it together and I'm gonna turn it so all my cuts are going sideways I could just turn my cutting board that would be easy enough but this is the way I chose to turn it today so now I'm gonna make some more vertical cuts but the reason I'm doing it this way is now when I cut my pieces are gonna be in small squares instead of these big chunks um, again, I'm just going to hold with my hand, almost like I'm holding a baseball, my onion together. And now I've cut up my onion and I'm just kind of picking out the pieces that either still have that paper stuff that I missed um, or might be just too big because some of these pieces are really big and I don't know about you but I don't like a giant piece of onion so if I find a piece that I think mm, that's a little too big for me I'm just gonna pull it to the side and cut it up because some of those end pieces got a little big but most of these turned out pretty good All right, um, I am not a huge onion fan. I like it, I think it provides some crunchiness and definitely provides some flavor, but I can go ahead and tell you I'm probably not gonna use all of this onion in one quesadilla, because for me that's just gonna be too much. But I'm gonna put this to the side, put my knife away. All right, next step. Cut jalapeno pepper, if using, into small pieces. I am not using a jalapeno pepper, um, but if you were, you would just need to make sure or decide if you're going to be using the seeds, because the seeds are where a lot of that spice is held. So if you are choosing to not use the seeds, um, you're gonna wanna cut it vertically and scrape, scrape those seeds out just to get rid of some of that spice. If you are using the seeds, then you don't have to worry about that step and you can just chop, 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 and be ready to go. All right, so our next step says to place the shredded cheese, the slices of ham, and the pieces of onion, jalapeno pepper if using, on the tortilla. Before I do that, I'm gonna do an additional step because my ham is in like a giant piece, so I need to cut it down into pieces that are gonna make sense for my tortilla. I don't like chomping into a tort or a quesadilla and there being a whole piece of chicken. I want there to be pieces. So what I've done is I just moved my onion to the side. And I'm gonna get out a slice of ham. Oh, it's a little stick. Pulling off pieces of ham. Go ahead and stick this back in the fridge so it's ready for any ham sandwiches that I might have later. Um, I can use the same knife that I used to cut my onion for two reasons. One. Um, an onion is a vegetable, and so I can always go from vegetable 
to a meat, and then I'm not gonna cross contaminate any germs that way. Also, this ham is completely cooked, so I'm not so concerned, which is why I have them sharing the same cutting board. If I was cutting something that was not cooked, like chicken, per se, I would use a different cutting board just so the juices that come out of my um, chicken when I'm cutting it aren't mixing with my vegetables, and I might get some um, germs in there that I don't want to. So I have some pieces of ham that I'm just gonna cut up into smaller pieces. Um, with my non-cutting hand, I'm just gonna steady the food by holding it and really just pushing it down. My knife, I'm gonna cut into thin strips. Um, when cutting into strips like this, I believe the term is julienne. Um, I'm not gonna chest julienne though, which is just cutting into the strips. I'm gonna cut them into bite-sized pieces. That's some of the fatty part. I don't necessarily want that. I'm really careful to kind of pull my fingers back so that way when I put my knife down my fingertips aren't in the way and they're not getting cut like my ham piece. Alright, so now that I've julienned, I'm just going to take pieces and turn them sideways and cut them into smaller, more bite-sized pieces. That one's already a bite-sized piece. And it's okay, because if you notice, my hand pieces are kind of different sizes. Um, my hand piece to begin with was kind of a weird size. As long as they're about the same size, um, and I'm really just looking for, I could eat a bite of one of these hand pieces in one of my bites. I don't, I'm not gonna be able to bite off this whole piece, so I'm just cutting it down to a slightly smaller piece, just so when I take a bite, I get a normal bite of ham that my body can chew. my hands. Alright, so now I'm going to start assembling my quesadilla. So if you remember, I have my tortilla on my paper plate. Pull this down. I'm going to assemble with my cheese first. I can get my cheese open is already shredded cheese and I'm just going to spread it around into a nice thin layer on my tortilla. So I can still see the tortilla through my cheese but I've got a nice little layer going towards it. You see that? And then now I'm going to start adding my ham pieces and I'm just going to place those around my tortilla that's covered in cheese now. And it's okay if you've cut up too much ham or too much onion that you're not gonna add. These are ingredients that yes, they are on the list, but it's ultimately your choice because you're going to be eating this. And then I'm gonna start to add some onion. I'm separating my onion so because some of these pieces are stuck together, so I only wanna eat one onion piece at a time. Oops. So I think my quesadilla looks pretty good at this point. If you notice, I have a lot of cut up leftovers and that's okay, these don't go to waste. Um, I'm sure you've seen your parents cook a lot before and you know that onions are used in a lot of different dishes, not just breakfast quesadillas. So the fact that you've already cut up one is very helpful to your parents because next time they need an onion cut up in the next couple of days, you've already done some of that hard work. So step five says to cover with another tortilla. So I'm gonna get another tortilla out of my bag. And I'm just gonna place it right on top. Now my tortillas are about the same size as my plate, but if you're working with smaller tortillas, you wanna make sure that you're covering up um, all that yummy goodness that you made. Step six, microwave on medium heat until the cheese has melted. I'm gonna do 
30 seconds on my microwave because my microwave is pretty heavy duty and I'm not 100% sure I know how to change the heat levels. Um, so I'm just going to do 30 seconds and check it and then if it's not good um, by then, then I can always do more time. So my timer just went off, so I'm going to check it for the first 30 seconds. And what I'm going to do to check this is, move, is I'm going to lift up that first tortilla and just kind of see if my cheese has started to melt because it should bring the other tortilla with it. So if you notice, I can pick up that top layer without much pull from the cheese. I'm going to push it back down, and this time since it it feels like it's getting ready to melt. I'm going to do a little less time. I'm going to do 20 seconds. So I just pulled out of the microwave of 20 seconds. It feels really hot. Oh, and my cheese is nice and melted. You can see it's starting to stick to my other layer a little bit. That means it's ready to eat. So my last two steps says, if you like, use any leftover ingredients to decorate your quesadilla. So I can make a smiley face using some leftover onion pieces. Just kind of decorate them like this. Might be a little bit harder since I'm using a white onion instead of a red onion. Red onions um, have a more peppery taste that is a little bit spicier so I went with more of a plain onion. Um, but they are a little bit longer so it's a little easier to make said smiley face. And then I have some leftover ham pieces. And there is my smiley face. Not as cute as what's pictured on our recipe, but it'll do. Um, number eight says cut the quesadilla into wedges and serve with sour cream and salsa. So I have sour cream and salsa already in my fridge, but I could just scoop them out on the plate, whatever I feel is necessary. There are two ways that I like to cut quesadillas. One is with a knife. Um, which will totally work, but I think my favorite way, because it's easier, is with a pizza cutter. So, if you have access to a pizza cutter, just make sure your quesadilla is on something that's not going to cut through. So a cutting board um, or a paper plate, that doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to cut my quesadilla, cut through his mouth. I wonder what fraction I've cut this into. I like smaller pieces, so I'm going to keep cutting. I'm going to take off my happy face. He was cute, but he's not very practical. And there I have my Mexican breakfast quesadilla. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm not a big ham and cheese fan. I definitely don't want onion in it. Um, that's the kind of neat thing with recipes is that you can really customize them however you want. Another fun idea might be instead of putting ham and cheese and onions like we did to follow this recipe, what if you put um, peanut butter and Nutella? Or peanut butter and bananas oh my gosh I'm obsessed with peanut butter and bananas that would be delicious so I encourage you to make this recipe try it out I've included a flip grid so you can tell me your thoughts was it yummy was it easy was it hard was it something that you would make again and then if you decide to get really creative and change up how you um, approach this recipe maybe instead of making a breakfast quesadilla you make a dessert quesadilla 
um, let me know how that turns out in your flip grid. Next time on Cooking Club.